Um, hi, uh, I'm Lauren and I'm going to be talking about some teaching methods for mathematical proofs. Um, okay, so teaching mathemati mathematical proofs can be quite daunting because uh, in order for, for students to successfully answer the questions, they have to know how to do it, organise their, th uh, organize their thoughts and then communicate them in a logical manner. And that's a lot to do. And there's only one of you and X many students. And so this is where my first activity can help you. Um, so you have six stations and at each station you have a question. Uh, you then assign the same number of students to each station. So in this case, I have three students at each station. You give them either a color or a number and, um, and yeah. So you give the, give the students some time to work on their problem. Uh, make sure you give them enough time so that they feel confident, so all of them feel confident about the question. Uh, you may have to walk around and help them out a little bit uh, just for this first round. Okay, so then what you do is you call out a, call out a colour uh, for them to stay at their station and the rest move around in a certain direction. So you call out blue stay and as you can see the reds, the red and the yellow students move around in a anti-clockwise direction. Uh, so then what happens is the blue students then becomes the teacher and as the, as the red and yellow students are working through the problem, the blue students can give uh, them some advice. Uh, you do have to make sure that they don't just show their working to their peers. What you want to encourage is them to uh, give them verbal feedback and communicate uh, some, some ways to uh, help the students. Then you, you see, call out another colour, such as red, and then uh, they move around, and then the red student becomes a teacher. Uh, then you call out yellow, and again they move around and they, they have a turn at uh, teaching. Uh, you probably would have already guessed, as long as you say each number five, uh, each colour five times, all of the students would have been exposed to the questions. Uh, there are some problems to this activity. Uh, just for the first round, make sure that all the students feel confident about their answers. Uh, because if, they, if someone doesn't know how to do it and they become the teacher, it can cause a, cause a couple of issues. So make sure that all of them feel confident at the start. Uh, encourage communication because uh, a lot of students, they think, oh yeah, just, just do this and this and this. So try to encourage them to uh, use words to help, uh, to help their peers. Um, also, you'll need to ac actively monitor the groups just to make sure that the right things are being said and they're giving the right kinds of, kind of advice. Uh, also, protect the original questions. The students will want to draw on them, so when the next group comes around, it makes it a little bit difficult, or it might make it easier for them to kind of uh, see the answer. So encourage them to draw the diagram in their own books and doodle on those. Uh, okay, my next activity is going to be on Google Docs. Uh, so this is a great way to uh, get some feedback from students, uh, see how they're going in class. And also, to, also the answers at the back of the textbook's not that great, then this is where you know, you'll end up with beautiful answers to share with the class. Okay, so what I do is I, I have like a worksheet and I'll give a student, I'll assign a question to each student. Now, you then share this document with your class and they go ahead and type up, type up their uh, solution to that question. Uh, and as you can see, they did a fantastic job. Uh, what I did was at the end of the class, I copied and pasted this onto a Word, onto a Word document and I went through it and made sure that you know, everything was good and you know, the answers were right. Um, and then I shared, shared it as a PDF um, the next lesson. Uh, I did feel that the students felt proud of their contribution. They're like, oh, this is mine. No, it's, all, it's the official one that everybody gets. So I, I think it is quite valuable to do. Uh, now problems, there are a lot of problems that can arise from this you will have to actively monitor. Uh, in my previous school, I, I had a top class for that for the activity, so it wasn't too much of a problem. And my previous school, it was not still, it still wasn't that much of a problem, but uh, I did have some concerns. So what I did that for that was, I had them type their solutions up on Word, and I only gave them like a one minute window for them to copy and paste their answers. And essentially I told them, if you don't make it, you're going to stay at, stay at lunchtime and do it with me. And so they're like, <laughs> copy paste. And so that was, that was really good. Um, you also have to check the answers before sharing because if, if a student got it wrong or you know, if they wrote an inappropriate uh, comment in there somewhere, you will want to catch it out before sharing it with the whole class. Um, okay, my last activity is peer marking. The thing is with geometrical proofs, it's, it's uh, yeah, the marking it gets a little bit too much. So why not let the kids mark? 
Uh, so here's an, here's an example of a worksheet that I used. Uh, so you have the question at the top and you give the students enough time to work through the problem and then they swap with their peers and then they have a go at, uh, at marking. And this is a great opportunity for them to kind of know what it's like and what, you know, what processes um, that what processes are made to you know, mark through all the proofs. So you want to encourage them to uh, keep, the keep their comments constructive on the paper as they annotate it. And at the end, there's a marking guideline for them to kind of, you know, give, the, give their friend a mark or something like that. Look, this, this activity works so well that I decided to make it even better. And this is a double-sided worksheet, so one, the, yeah, yeah. Um, so on the, on the first page, you have the question and you have the response section and the students get to um, you know, write their answer, then they swap, and then behind it, up there is the solutions, and then you have the feedback uh, form that the students get to fill out. So you have, uh, I'll, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Uh, so you have, they get to, you know, instead of marks, they get to write, say, oh, you know, this was poor, this was excellent, and what, par what parts um, you know, they liked about it, and they can give some uh, comments as well. So, you know, your, you did very well. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so, so you have to encourage them to keep it constructive. Then afterwards, they swap back with their uh, with their peers, and then the students have time to make some uh, make some notes for themselves as well. Uh, some things you may want to consider is, consider is to actively monitor it because uh, yeah, you don't want the comments to be mean or you, yeah, you don't want them. Yeah, you want to keep it constructive. Uh, also, give them enough time for this activity because. If not, you, it just becomes another worksheet, something that you know they'll just keep in the back of their book or something. Um, and also encourage teamwork. You want to get a good vibe going uh, in the classroom. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs>